Hi and welcome. It's uh, very important in capstone simulation that you are able to process a whole lot of data, which is available across different reports. And, um, um, and you know, there are three major activities that you need to do effectively. One is uh, to ensure you're having the right product. Basically, you are fitting all the customer criteria into each of the uh, five segments uh, that you'll be operating in. And um, the other one is how well can you decide on forecasting? And then uh, you have to beat the competition. So you need to see all the parameters, all the criteria, and take a decision on how you can outsmart the competition as well. So what I'm going to show you is just the two tables that will help you take all your decisions, most of it. So let's begin with uh, the first table. You can see it. You can see my screen. Um, so you have these five segments here. And then you are, uh, you have the drift. You know where to catch the drift from, uh, from the industry conditions report. Okay. So if, uh, this you keep it for the time being and then you come back and then you essentially uh, see what are the expectation <clears throat> you have to refer to the previous previous uh, uh, capstone courier and uh, and catch all these data for each of the segments say for, for able you need to see what is the performance expectation 7.8 size then the uh, uh, mtbf the expected age and the price range okay and uh, you can see here i have highlighted in the uh, based on the color uh, that is yeah, uh, green is the highest priority second priority is uh, highlighted in uh, yellow color the third one is in orange the fourth priority is marked as red so you can mark all this uh, in that same or in that in that order so green means uh, for able the traditional product age is the first important criteria that is the highest weightage and the next one is yellow color you can see it's the price so you need to uh, focus on the price at the next level and then orange is where the uh, size and performance matters then the, the last the least important in this is the mtbf so this way it will easily help you to decide on where to focus on each segment so when you come to acre for example you see that price uh you see that acre which is a low end segment price is the most important criteria Similarly, when you come to the next high-end segment, price is least uh, criteria. So this way you can track what is your expectation. So next, what you need to do is map your last data that you had entered uh, from the R&D section. You, you capture the performance, size, and age. Okay. And then you also capture the uh, MTBF and also you uh, capture the price that you had entered from the marketing section so let's come back to this you had taken the performance uh, uh, drift you have seen the performance drift it is uh, plus, plus 0.7 for performance and uh, negative 0.7 for the size so based on that you can just put a simple formula uh, where you are saying, okay, um, uh, what is the expectation from the previous capstone courier? Say, for example, uh, 7.8 is what I have here. And then um, you um, you just multiply it with, with the, either you can add the whole of the drift or you can decide that, okay, you just want to capture 75% of the drift. So what do you do is 7.8 plus 0.7 into 75 percent this is a simple formula i have put here uh, 
Um, so you can just put that same same form same formula for size also. Uh, you can decide uh, and uh, either put 50%, 75% or you can even uh, uh, make it 100%. That is, you, you want to capture the entire drift that is required. So it's your uh, decision. Okay, so once you are, have done this, you know what is the uh, what is the R and D specs that you need to enter into the R and D section for all the customer criteria? It helps you with uh, the performance and size, so you can update that. And then you have to come to and what you need to do also is so you are up against a competition. You know that and. You need to map only the last, the, the two most important factors in each segment. So what is important in each segment? So in traditional, you know that age is age, and price, these are two important factors. So when you come to low end, you know it's again age and price, okay? And then when you come to high end, uh, it is performance, size, and age. There are three factors here. So just capture this. And this you have to capture from the capstone courier, your last competition data. Whichever competition you want to beat, just try to capture, the, just refer the capstone courier uh, for each of the segments and see what your competition has done. Uh, e even if you're the leader, just see one below what is the competition's number and just put it here. <clears throat> it will help you to take the decision when you are updating your um, uh, on the capstone simulation. Okay, so once you have this, you have your RD specs ready. Uh, sorry, I have some cold. Then let's see uh, the next table. Uh, so the next table is about your um, the sales data, the market share data. So you need to again refer to your capstone courier update how much you sold in the previous round and what was the market then and uh, what is the market share it's a simple formula that you need to work on and then see uh, from here from the last uh, uh, from the last courier uh, report you will come to know what is the uh, what is the growth rate for each of the segments in this case uh, it was a negative seven percent so i put it as negative seven so you can you can put uh, whatever re your report says you can just put that and then you get the new market share uh, uh, so you get the new market the total market so it was 36 939 it has come down to 34 353 basically because there's a negative growth in this uh, in this uh, in this round and then you need to map what was the missed share you would have had a stock out in a, so I had a stock out in this um, a size segment and I mapped how much did I lose uh, in this segment. And so what is the units uh, it corresponds to? And then you have the new uh, volume that you would have actually achieved. So you see here, I just uh, added 400 uh, units to 1160, which was the actual sale value from the courier stone and this is the missed share so i have this total uh, volume that i could have sold last in the last round so what does it mean in terms of market share percentage a simple formula and then in order to retain the same market share what are the number of units that you need to sell so just multiply this uh, percentage with the new market uh, the overall market size that you got here for uh, so for traditional you got 9769 so, and you had a 19% uh, market share. So that means you can sell 1832 units in this round. And then you need to see how good are you 
uh, in relation to competition? Uh, how well have you uh, done your uh, customer criteria uh, updation? Based on that, you can decide whether you will be able to have a little more extra market share. So you can just put maybe one person, two person, or if you con if you con if you feel you're seeing this, for example, in the in the in this segment. I have not taken um, anything extra because I've already mapped my uh, missed market share. So um, I'm not adding anything more. So um, if I had a, uh, if I had a, a stock out, then I would normally not add more uh, market share, but I would just try to map what the missed market share. But again, it's your strategy and uh, you can decide how you want to do that. And then once you add extra market share, you have the, the new one, the new market that you are going to update in the uh, in the forecast section. So you can use this as a basis for your forecast and uh, map your production capacity from the production. Uh, uh, so you map both the uh, both shifts capacity into this and see how you stand. This will also help you take decision if if you if you're continuously selling. Let's say uh, in this case, 1930 versus 3200, there's no need to keep so much capacity. You, you can uh, sell the capacity a little bit. And uh, you see in the, this last segment, um, I'm actually running short of the capacity. So I might as well uh, add some capacity uh, in this round. Uh, of course, the capacity will be available the next year. So you, you, you'll be able to take all the decisions if you just map these few things here. It's a, it's a very simple table. You can have a look at it. So you have the uh, the drift. Uh, you have the performance and size, which is a calculated number from the expectation. And you are mapping what was your data that you had in your earlier report. This is to ensure uh, that you are able to easily compare what you are entering in the next round. You're not making any mistake in entering in the next round. So performance was 7.5 and I've ensured that I've increased it to 8.3. So that's good. Um, and, uh, and it's important that you are within the range of the criteria that is where you will be here. You will not miss out. You will be in the performance, you will be in the customer criteria range if you follow this process. And uh, just highlight the, uh, uh, based on the importance, highlight them. It will be very easy to take a decision and then map the competition data here for each of the segments. It will be very useful to take your decisions. And the second table which I showed you is on how to capture all the volumes, how to arrive at your market share, how can you uh, um, include your missed market share when you had a stock out? And then how can you um, add your extra market share? Also check how you can uh, compare your capacity uh, with what is your uh, planned forecast and accordingly take the decisions. I hope it helps. Uh, let me know your feedback. Thanks for watching.